In our series on fifth generation aircraft, we've explored various international designs, including Turkey's TFKN, South Korea's KF-21, India's HAL AMCA, and China's J-20 and J-31. So far, South Korea's KF-21 appears to be the most advanced in terms of technology and available expertise. Meanwhile, China's J-20 benefits from substantial funding and robust manufacturing capabilities. Today, we turn our focus to Russia, which has developed two next-generation models, the Su-75 Checkmate, whose future remains uncertain, and the Su-57 Felon, an older model already in service, originally designed to rival the F-35 and F-22. The Soviets had aimed to introduce a fifth-generation fighter by the mid-1990s, a project known as the Multifunctional Frontline Fighter, MFI, intended to replace the MiG-29 and Su-27 flanker. This led to two competing concepts, MiGs 1.44 and Sukhoi's S-32, later known as the Su-47. But neither met viability standards as they needed to fulfill both fighter and multi-role functions. The program stalled following the Soviet Union's collapse and Russia's economic difficulties, but in 2001, Russia's military revived the project as Paik fa once again with Miji and Sukhoi competing. MiG's approach prioritized affordability and ease of production. Sukhoi's design was more costly but technically superior, leading the military to favor it. Sukhoi had established a strong reputation in the 1990s by developing multiple flanker variants and sustaining itself through steady export sales despite financial challenges. By 2003, Sukhoi selected its subcontractors, and by 2004, it had finalized a conceptual design. This design, the T-50, bore similarities to the F-22, but without the extreme cost. Funding began in 2005, and by 2007, the design was completed. A prototype was ready by 2009, and it achieved its first flight in 2010. Over the next decade, Sukhoi developed 10 additional pre-production demonstrators, and in 2017, the aircraft was officially named the Su-57, receiving the NATO designation Felon. Despite its advanced design, the Felon faced delays primarily due to funding issues, worsened by economic struggles and sanctions following the 2014 annexation of Crimea. By 2020, however, the aircraft was officially in service with the delivery of the first production model. The Felon was designed to surpass the capabilities of the Flanker, Russia's most versatile and powerful fighter, comparable to the F-15. Many designers agree that the shape and style provide multiple advantages, such as enhanced agility, high altitude and high-speed performance, and stealth capabilities. This consensus on design is prevalent in countries like China, the US, and South Korea. However, in Russia, there has been some contention. Some Russian designers held the controversial view that the flanker had already achieved the ideal fighter airframe, making further developments unnecessary. They argued against following current trends in military aviation, believing the flanker's performance, particularly its superior handling at both high and low speeds offered significant advantages over rivals like the F-15, which lacks comparable low speed capabilities. There has long been debate over how the flanker compares with the F-22 in low speed performance. However, unlike the F-22, the flanker and most fourth generation designs lack a stealth optimized shape, placing them at a disadvantage in beyond visual range scenarios. The Su-57 Felon, in contrast, clearly prioritizes stealth, though some designers felt this came at the expense of the flanker's ideal flight characteristics. Let's review the approximate technical specifications of the Felon, which, while not official, are widely inferred from major online sources. At high altitude, the Su-57 Felon can supercruise at Mach 1.3 and reach a top speed of Mach 2.2 faster than the F-35, but slower than the F-22, J-20, and many flanker variants. Its range is notable, 
reportedly 3,500 kilometers on internal fuel and 4,500 kilometers with two external drop tanks. This is significantly greater than the F-22's publicly stated range of 1,000 kilometers on internal fuel, suggesting a possible design trade-off to achieve this extended reach, bringing it close to the F-35C's capability. The felon service ceiling reaches 66,000 feet, roughly matching the F-22's estimated ceiling. In terms of weaponry, the felon's configuration mirrors that of the F-22. It has six hard points within its internal bay, with an additional six external hard points. The exact missile load capacity is unclear, though it is likely that at least four R-77Ms can fit internally potentially utilizing all six internal pylons. This setup closely aligns with the F-22, which has six internal and four external hard points. The Felon is also equipped with a sophisticated sensor suite for enhanced situational awareness, including an ultraviolet missile warning system, an infrared search and track system, laser directional infrared countermeasures, internal thermal imaging, and reportedly an additional electro-optical system. The Su-57 may lack the digital networking capabilities seen in Chinese designs, but its refined manufacturing process could make it mechanically superior and more reliable than the J-20. This choice to deprioritize networking could have been intentional, though it's hard to confirm. We likely won't know the full story of the Su-57 until further details or combat footage reveal its performance or production trajectory. It does seem unusual that footage showcasing impressive kills by the Su-35 has been released, while no similar clips of the Su-57 are available. For now, we can assume that even in limited production, the Felon serves a more cautious deterrent role. In the event of a large-scale conflict, however, it would likely become Russia's primary air superiority fighter, similar to how the F-22 Raptor would be the main deterrent in a U.S. land conflict. Both the Su-57 and F-22 share more similarities with each other than with other fifth-generation fighters we've reviewed. They are unique in their limited numbers, highly valued by their respective air forces, and are likely each other's strongest rivals. In an all-out war, each would be carefully deployed as a critical asset to achieve air superiority. Now, if you like this video, check out this next video right here.